Welcome to the Business of Being Healthy, where we are passionate about treating our health as good as we treat our wealth. Shelly Bryan here, and I am obsessed with sharing real life experiences and wisdom to help save you time, heartache, and money as you continue to grow personally and professionally. Twice a week, we push aside that BS to take massive intentional action. And I promise by tuning in, you will receive the straightforward talk you've been waiting for filled with actionable steps that will inspire you to achieve the health and wealth you desire while you are building your empire. Welcome back to another episode of the Business of Being Healthy show. This is Shelly Bryan, your host, and Today's guest, you know, I love these guest episodes because it's all about sharing that wisdom and that wisdom only becomes wisdom when we share it. Otherwise, it's just an experience that you had. And so the two ladies that are joining me today literally have over 32 years of professional experience between them and they are changing the game when it comes to style. And so I am so excited to be able to welcome to all of you, my listeners, both Jacqueline as well as Laura with Shine Image Consulting. Now, Shine Image Consulting provides style consulting for your personal and professional life. But today you are going to find out just how much style can impact, but also the way that they do it. This isn't like your normal, like style Vogue magazine that you're like, yeah, that. I mean, I'm five foot two on a good day, ladies. Like I am not going to wear that outfit. So um, Jacqueline, Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Shelly. We adore you. I love that you said like changing the game. That feels, that's a tall order. So thank you. Well, and I almost teared up at the introduction. So that's going to give, Mm -hmm. that that gives any sign of where this is going to go. We we got a good episode on our hands. Right. All right. No, I'm super excited. I mean, we met not too long ago, but it was like an instant connection. And you know, when there's like good people and good people, like good things happen. Right. right. And so um watching both of you and the company evolve um is just so cool. But before we kind of dive into style and all of that. I would love if you would each share, and Laura, we can start with you, but each share a little bit just to kind of like your professional background, because that definitely plays into what you're doing now. Sure. So hi, everybody. This is Laura. Professional background. Wow. I grew up in financial services, but I I do like to share that before I entered financial services, I was in college, aspiring to be attorney. And then I realized that that's not the path for me and started a company that my friend worked at or started working in a company that my friend worked at and really built a solid foundation and career. And I share that because if there are listeners that are either in college or maybe on their second career, like Sometimes we never know what we want to be when we grow up and there's always a space for everybody. So I just have to share that with you because I've personally experienced that. But yes, worked um, about 15 years in financial services, primarily in service type roles. So I had big leadership roles. My last role, I was a senior level executive um, leading a lot of people and I loved every ounce of it. I enjoy the opportunity to be in front of larger groups of people, setting goal, vision, direction, coaching, developing people to be their absolute best and just loved, loved the experience for sure. And it's so cool. Like, that's just the tipping point. Like what I know and what we're going to talk about today, it's yeah. like, I, I'm so excited to kind of lean in on that. Cause I know that's really like forming what you do now. I mean, leading a team within a large financial organization um, and sometimes financial may not be that exciting or fun or like what have you, right? But like leading a team to stay engaged, right? Is yeah. is something that takes skill. So I can't wait to hear more, more about that. Um, and the whole lawyer thing, FYI, I LSATs, I was going to law school every, I was in, I was like in and I backed out. I was like, Did wait a minute. That, Shelly. That's amazing. Yeah, I was, I was like, 
I, I literally backed out at the last minute. I was already accepted. I was going and I'm wow. so glad. I'm so glad. Um, I've talked to more people that were going to go to law school and didn't, I'm so glad I'm not an attorney, nothing against attorneys out there, but like, I'm glad mm -hmm. I'm not. All right, Jacqueline, share a little bit about your background and maybe tie together where you two met. Sure. So I'm Jacqueline. I actually went to college for sports broadcasting. So how I ended up at financial services doesn't make. Wait, hold on a minute. A ton so of stuff. Jacqueline and I are best friends and I didn't even know that. Sports <laughs> broadcasting, that's amazing. Yeah, I wanted to stand on the sidelines at college football games. I mean, like Aaron Andrews, like that's what I wanted to do. That's awesome. And but during the summers leading into my junior year and then therefore my senior year too, I got involved in internships for like PR agencies and marketing. So I got a little bit away from the broadcasting piece. And then truthfully, after college, I, I needed a job and I applied to a financial services company. And I was like, I'll do this for a little bit and then I'll move back home to New York and I'll get on TV. 17 years later, I was still at the financial services company. I worked my way up to a sales executive there. So I was responsible for a couple hundred million dollars in sales every year to the the firm. And we worked with very, very large corporations that everyday companies that you would recognize. And I was primarily responsible for like territory strategy, sales presentations, coaching, pricing negotiations, sales to service. I was responsible for for all of that, primarily on, on the West Coast. And I loved it. I think that's what kept me going there for so long, even though it was away from my sports broadcasting dream. I still got to present a lot and coach other men and women to be able to present with me so that we can ultimately win the business. And that's how I had the, I would say, serendipitous point of meeting Laura. So when once I would win the business, Laura and her large team would service it. And mm -hmm. that's how, how we met. And I would say, Chile, like, I, I wish I could tell you that, like, we worked together on, like, all these games. We probably did. But I think the memories that I have mm -hmm. of us is, like, us sitting in her office, like, taking a break, like, talking about our plans for the weekend, talking about, like, the latest fashion that just came out or, like, the cool outfit that she was wearing where she got it. So even though I'm so grateful for that experience because that's how we met, um, we knew that there was mm -hmm. something better, more different out there for us. I it would say just to add on to that story, a lot of those conversations certainly were about fashion and style, but we coached a lot of women. Oh, so yeah. I had mm -hmm. a team of about 50 leaders. Jacqueline was an informal leader, but certainly coaching other professionals on sales presentation skills and how to interact with clients. And we had a lot of conversation about the 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 role confidence and self-esteem plays in the workplace and presenting yourself your best self and how much fashion and style can actually help with that mm -hmm. level of self-esteem and confidence so which is sometimes minimized though uh, and that's what we saw all the time was mm -hmm. that style was put on the back burner mm -hmm. whereas we feel and we believe is a principle of our business that it is one of the pillars of confidence and 100 percent so as much as we love talking about like all like certainly we did, you know, the jewelry, the clothes, we loved it all. It was also about the role that style plays in really building the self-esteem of women in particular. No, I, I absolutely love that. And, and I think the, the, we're going to see a lot of consistencies that converged and created, right. Shine image consulting. Um, and, and the word coaching comes up a lot, right. And so when you think sometimes style, right? Everyone listening in style, you're not necessarily thinking coaching. And so that is, I think one of the things that truly sets you both apart is coaching in style. You would think a lot about the confidence, not just, do I look good? Is this fashionable? Like all of that, there's a lot more to it. And, um, you kind of perfectly teed this up. So thank you ladies. Um, and maybe Jacqueline, cause I know you and I have had this conversation previously just with, creating shine. Like you knew you wanted Laura, right. But like getting the courage to one, leave a 17 year career, right. That, I mean, talk about bravery and courage, right. And then bringing on someone that you knew it, it's kind of, you guys were destined to meet You're destined to be where you are now. You couldn't be without the experience, but I would love for you, Jacqueline, to just share how shine came about sure i would say that 
towards the latter end of my time in financial services, I was starting to get this feeling of just unsettlement. And I, I wasn't, I felt lack of fulfillment. I felt like there was something more different, better out there. And I kept going back to like fashion. And then also, as Laura said, the most like helping women. I was like, how, how can, how can I do that? And so I got my image stylist, my image style certification from the Fashion Stylist Institute in 2019. Why I was doing my full-time job. I did it on the side on the weekends at night. And I actually filed the name for Shine LLC in January of 2020 because I was like, I'm going to start this business this year. And then obviously we all know what happened a few few weeks later in early March. And I was like, okay, well, this is a, a slight detour. And so... <laughs> <laughs> but it's so a detour grateful. yeah we don't stop it's just a detour yeah right. but I was so grateful for that time because it actually caused me to pause like in, in my previous job I was traveling every week right so shine was in the back of my head but very very deep, very very deep back there but when I stopped traveling for work and I was home a lot working still but I was able to at least have the mental capacity to start really dreaming about what I wanted and, and what what my next chapter was going to be and then it just becomes like something you can't ignore. Like it's this feeling that just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you just like, can't shove it down anymore. You're like, I have to do this is like, I, I have to do this. And so I am so grateful for the time that I had in financial services, not only because of meeting Laura, but just because of, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now if it wasn't for that. But I left in late 2021 and, you know, I was starting bits and pieces of putting shine together, but just like that feeling of shine coming to the surface and like I couldn't bury it anymore I also had this feeling of like something is missing there's a reason why this hasn't been launched yet there's a, not a reason why I'm, I'm not like I'm holding myself back but there's there's a component missing mm -hmm. and I remember looking at my husband one night over dinner and I was like it's Laura like I need Laura to do this mm -hmm. with me not only is she amazingly passionate about fashion she's incredibly talented when it comes to career consulting with women and she's just fun and smart and I love her and I was like how am I going to ask her to do this and so literally my poor husband I mean I made him role play with me and practice me asking Laura for weeks because if you know Laura like she asks a lot of questions she's a very deep thinker that's what I what I love about her so I was trying to like prepare for anything she threw at me and I was role playing with him and practicing and practicing until finally he was like Jacqueline enough this is Laura stop like just call her and so I, I worked up the guts to, to call her and I, I just said it. I said, something's missing. This is my vision. I want you to be a part of it. And she didn't come at me with questions. She didn't like debate with me. She was like, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that sounds fair, great. <laughs> I thought she was going to tell me really something ominous. So for all of your listeners, you know, she, Jacqueline sent me that text of, hey, can I talk to you later today? Like, I need to talk to you. Okay. That sounds like. Yeah. Like, Serious and ominous. So yeah. the second she she called me, I did the phone. I said, "Are you okay? Are we okay? Did I do something?" <laughs> <laughs> so it it just goes to show, like even in your closest relationships, your friendships, right? Mm -hmm. Things can be scary. Mm -hmm. um, but it yep. was kind of a no brainer. Yeah, for sure. I love that. And and I mean the fact that you knew you knew it, right? So I love the detour that you had yeah. to take same right yeah. and all that time like let you really settle in because like if you would have launched without Laura could you have the success that you have right now probably not no, right no, no, and so no definitely not. yeah no it, it shine wouldn't be what it is and it you needed that detour yeah, so that you could come to the point where you were finally like okay it's Laura and yeah. then I love that you were role playing with your husband um <laughs> I learned this skill when I was in corporate America too. I role play with, yeah. I've role played with Chris. I've role played with the kids to, when right. they're navigating something. I'm like, let's talk about it. I'm the person, you know, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it's such like a powerful tool. So like, I love that. Um, and then Laura, it, it's so funny getting those texts. Like immediately we naturally want to be like, oh my God, what's the worst that's going to happen. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it took all the guts of Jacqueline to send the text and she's oh, probably yeah. trembling, heart beating like crazy. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, sure. 
yeah let's do it nothing ever good comes from can i can we talk later like never ever yeah but i you know i'm certainly glad that she did i you know from a detour perspective like i was probably in the same boat just a little bit behind jacqueline like six Mm -hmm. months later like i don't know that this is the right spot for me i can appreciate everything i learned in corporate america i wouldn't be here being able to consult and support women more broadly without it yeah so it's sometimes life is a matter of timing so that detour is truly just a function of timing and what's happening in life and it still works out just maybe on a different timeline than you anticipated Mm -hmm. it comes out on the right timeline ultimately Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like ultimately it comes out on the right timing. So I love that. Okay. I want to dive in here and talk about your approach to style. And I think that we could kind of do this in a few different ways and mm-hmm. everyone listening in, um, you know, men and women, you're going to benefit from this conversation because style is so much more than just clothes. It is so much more, especially when it comes to your career. And, you know, here on the business of being healthy, there's like multiple facets. That's why I named it this, right. That we can take with this. And with style, I know that you are both passionate about that style is attainable for everyone and every body, right? So every body type and being fully inclusive. And so I would love Laura, if you could share a little bit on and what does that mean? Like, what is like that, that mean for shine and where is your vision right now with shine? Yeah, I think Shelly, you know, it's, it's often we meet with clients and I would say even for ourselves, it's like, well, what is my style? Am I, you know, we, we may have all taken those like quizzes, whether it's like stitch fix or mm-hmm. whatever. And it gives you like a list of like bohemian and preppy smart and I'm making these up I don't even know and I, if you're anything like me like I've sat in front of those and I was like I don't even know what box I should be check- I don't even know it's not a your style is so much more than just like a checkbox on a questionnaire and we actually really embed that I'll say in our process you have to know yourself and we spend a lot of time getting to know our clients who they are as people What do they enjoy doing? What um, do they do professionally? How do they spend their free time? What do they absolutely hate? Because style is not a checkbox. It's a culmination of everything in your life and how you live your life. And for us, that is really fundamental. It's like step number one with all of our clients is just, we got to get to know you Mm -hmm. because if we're going to recommend anything to you in terms of style and wardrobe. It has to feel authentic and be realistic to who you are and the way you live your life. Yeah. So I'll, to me that I would say that's tenant, tenant number one. Um, we're not a checkbox. You got to dig deep. You got to really, under, and we'll ask you tough questions. Mm-hmm. We're probably going to cry. There's, and we're gonna te- laugh. there's tears usually involved. A hundred percent. Yep. Um, but that is part of that transformative experience of finding your style and finding your wardrobe. Um, you can't just put on an outfit and claim a style. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like that usually. Yep. Whereas I think that's where people get frustrated mm-hmm. because they will see different outfits online or different people like wearing this and they're like, oh, I'm going to buy that. And then they get it and it either they like it or they don't, or they put it in their closet and they never wear it because it's not authentic to them. Mm-hmm. They're just mm-hmm. copying a look from someone, which we've all been there. I'm not saying that that's wrong, mm-hmm. but that's where it's, that's like a quick fix, putting a bandaid on discovering mm-hmm. what your style is. Yep. And I would say with that, we certainly leverage tools to help complement finding that wardrobe and finding that style. So we will we'll get, we'll take measurements. Yes. We will pull out the measuring tape. We're going to take your measurements and find your shine size. We're going to take pictures of your face, front forward profile to do a full color analysis, to identify a color palette that best complements you so that we're narrowly focused when we find the wardrobe for you. So we bring this element of your life experience and who you are on the inside and how you live your life 
combining it with a science, more, I would say, scientific approach to identify a wardrobe for you that is Shelly Bryan style only. And we're getting rid of like the check boxes of I'm bohemian chic. I don't even know what that means, right? So we're, I'll say we just really try to individualize that holistically. Which I think is super important. And offering a specialized service, you have to, right? I mean, that's the thing is like when like a service such as yours, like it can't be a checkbox. And that's where you get the box from the companies, right? Because you accidentally checked Bohemian, right? And so now you open this box and you're like, what the heck is this? Like, I would never wear this. Return all of it. I just wasted my time and I feel almost less because this isn't my style, right? And mm-hmm. so I love that you dabbled on the scientific side, you know, me from my like pharmaceutical backgrounds. I'm like, oh, studies, science, like I'm all about it. Um, so Jacqueline, I'd love for you to kind of share a little bit about this certification, number one, because I didn't know that about, about you. I didn't know that. And the scientific approach to style. I mean, I, I don't know about our listeners. I've never heard that. So help us understand. Sure. So a few different things. The image stylist certification, it's about an an 18 month long program. You could do it at condensed, but I did 18 months because I was also working at the same time. And you spend a ton of time understanding body types. And Laura and I, for Shine, we sort of transformed this way of thinking when it comes to body types. But the traditional body types that you learn are like triangle, rectangle, inverted triangle, pear, apple, all of these, all of these different shapes and terms, which are unbelievably helpful in actually understanding the way bodies are shaped and how to best accentuate certain parts of your body and how to best style your body. Mm -hmm. I think Laura and I are changing that and we have come up with just what is your shine size? We're Mm -hmm. not here to tell you that you're a pear or an apple or a triangle or because no one wants to be a shape or fruit. We are more of what is your authentic beautiful you what is your shine size Mm -hmm. and so at the institute we learned how to take measurements correctly we learned color analysis so laura alluded to where we take pictures of you and that's taking into consideration your hair your eye color your skin tone and putting together colors that complement those features on you to wear Mm -hmm. in the cooler months and the warmer months and that's not to say that you can't wear other colors. These are just the colors that best complement the features that you already have. And so we share our color analysis with our clients of these are the best colors for you. Now let's go build a wardrobe foundation based off of those colors. And if you love other colors that aren't included, let's add some pieces of those into that. Let's really lean into that. Um, I would say the other aspect that we studied is along with the color analysis is the potty types is just like we dove into like just case studies of body types and women feel diff- feeling stuck in their style and how could we help them based on the knowledge that we built from the the fashion oh. stylist institute so that would taking all of that so the color analysis body type all the different case studies that we did we bring a very very scientific approach because the goal Shelly is for you know we're as much as we would love to be you know we can't be in our clients closets every day so it's like when we spend the time with them how do we educate them how do we empower them so that ongoing mm-hmm. they feel confident when they're looking in the a store or they're shopping online they're like oh yeah this works for me or you know what this doesn't work for me but I love this style I'm gonna go find it somewhere else they are, they fall in love with their closet and feel joy. Like when I walk out of my closet, I, I'm like excited. I love my closet. Mm -hmm. And if I don't love it and something's off, I have to change it. And that's really our goal is we want people to be educated, empowered, Mm -hmm. and truly feel joy when they walk into their closet. We're not just here to share outfits. We come in with a very, very specific approach so that people walk away knowing what works for them. Uh, it's so powerful. Um, and I've heard the stories of like that you've shared. We've, if you guys, if everyone listening in, you for sure have to follow them on social media, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram, but it's so it's, it's the, the educated, the knowledge part, right? 
we we'll talk, I want to talk about confidence because I think that's a really important aspect of it, but it's not just the, the, the confidence of like what you're wearing. It's like, you know how to walk into your closet and put these things together. It's like coming prepared to a business meeting or walking in going, Oh shoot. I forgot we had a business meeting. Your confidence level is going to be very different in both scenarios. So Laura, I'd love for you to share kind of like the confidence and in to knowledge and helping your clients like understand st their style, right? And what transformation, because you used this word earlier, the transformation process. So yeah. like what, what you see there? Go ahead. Yeah, you know, it is such a empowering experience. That's the word that comes to mind. Like our goal is that women feel empowered to navigate their own unique personal style independently because that breeds self-esteem and self-confidence that you carry forward in all elements of your life personally and professionally and it's not uncommon right for us to interact with clients for the first time and they don't know what their style is they feel lost or stuck in what they're wearing they have a hard time describing anything that they frankly love about their body or themselves and it's all rooted in the fact that when they step in their closet, there's no empowerment of deciding how to dress themselves independently versus what they see mm -hmm. on a visual poster board, whether that be Instagram or a magazine or wherever else, right? So I, I underscore that because we spend so much time with our clients, like physically in their closet having them put on outfits that they like and having them describe what they love about it. And we will get personal and say, Hey, talk to me, talk to us about what you love about your body. And our job is to consult and help you help identify the things that you may not see that you candidly should be loving. So it's such a transformative process, honestly, emotionally before we even buy clothes. Mm -hmm. Then when we start to buy clothes and we bring those together, every time our clients put on a new outfit, we're educating them why it works for them based on our scientific approach. But most importantly, we ask how they feel in it. Mm -hmm. Because we can give you a scientific approach all day, every day. We can buy you the best blazer out there. But if you don't feel good in it and you don't, identify how you feel it doesn't matter it won't enable you to independently navigate your style so it's such a it's a, again such a critical process it's not just going out and buying buying clothes mm -hmm. anybody can do that we yeah. can all do that but it's really taking a deeper look into who you are and how you live your life and how you feel and what you wear so that you can navigate that independently feel empowered and carry that through every every aspect of your life I really love that. It, it brought to back a memory for me. Um, when you said, tell me what you love about your body, you're in the closet with them and tell them what you love about your body. And I've, um, I'm going to share a personal, personal experience to kind of tie this together and the feeling you, you guys have heard me. If you follow me on social media, I talk a lot about the feeling with health is I remember once I had a coach and he was like, well, tell me what you want. We were working, this was physical fitness. So we were working on like body composition. I didn't, I, he said, tell me what you want. You know what I did? I listed all the things I don't want. I don't want to get big thighs. I don't want this. I don't want that. I don't want this. Right. So like, I'm not going to work these muscles because I don't want this. He goes, what do you want? Let's talk about what you do want. And I was like, right there. I mean, that was a, like one of those, you know how like you have those like life changing like yep. moments, I was like, okay, why don't I speak into existence what I do want instead of focusing on what I don't want. And so the fact that you take the time to do that with your clients is so powerful. And I'm sure you just visually see the, the, the change right on them, exactly. but, but talking about what we do want, I don't think we do that enough. You know, it's like, I walk, you know, walking in the, in the closet. I know there's been periods in my life where I walk in and I'm like, nothing fits. I'm, I'm, 
I'm mm-hmm. over it. I don't even want to do this. And yeah. as I age, which I want to, I definitely want to get into this as I age style is changing different yeah. things are going on in my life now. And I need yeah. to evolve. And sometimes I don't know how, so I need people that are trained yeah. in how to do this. Um, Shelly, can but, I comment on one thing you said? No, absolutely not. Yes, of course. Oh. Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah. yes. I <laughs> you said, you know, walking in your closet, and you're like, shoot, I have nothing to wear. I think what we try to teach our clients and I think what we encourage all women to really think about because we've been there too, that when you have that feeling and you put something on that you feel less than happy about, mm-hmm. really paying attention to how that carries into other facets of your life, mm-hmm. the way you show up into a room, the way you talk to people, the way you represent yourself, the way you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. For me, like, and I know Laura feels the same way, like it truly begins there because the impact that that can have is so much deeper and so much greater than I think we're willing to admit. And that's where fashion and style is so important because it's not just like, oh, I don't want to spend the money on this or I don't want like Mm. fashion is fashion is attainable for everybody. Not only everybody, but literally everybody, no matter what your budget is, it is attainable for you. But I think first admitting like, wow, it it really affects everything I do throughout my day, the way I treat myself, the way I treat mm-hmm. others and the way I show up. Yeah, I, I would say I personally felt that. And so if anyone that's listening is maybe questioning like, oh gosh, am I not showing up for myself in the realm of fashion? You're not alone. Like I, I've, I've been there, Me you know, too. in 2020, I, Prior to COVID, going into an office five days a week, and I love, I know you feel the same way. Yeah. I loved getting dressed. It was my Me favorite too. part of the day. I laid out my outfit the night before. Yes. Yeah. It sets a tone for the day. And the degree of that outfit and how I prepared it prepared me essentially for anything I was going to experience that day. Honestly, the second I got home and working from home, I was not disciplined mm-hmm. about getting dressed. I was if I'm being honest, rolling out of bed, logging in and joining a meet, there was no a work-life balance or limited work-life balance. But it was just easy. I was rolling about and I was missing my favorite part of the day that set a tone and foundation. No different than health and fitness, eating well, right? The business of being healthy is all related. Mm-hmm. It it changes the game. And so that is a big part of what I'll say we share with clients is like you're not you're not alone. And it's never too late either, by the way. Like you can correct course and make meaningful changes in whatever aspect that you want to commit to making changes to. Uh, but it does start within within and recognizing that it's it's time. Yeah. Time. Yeah. No, I love, I love that. And I mean, I, I'm thinking about like all these times and I know our listeners are probably thinking this too, is like, you think about times where you like wore an outfit and you were like, I felt horrible in that. And I had to go like work all day and it, nothing like I hit traffic, nothing tasted good. I was short with my kids. I was short, you know, with my employees, like, like it carries on. And so that I love that, um, like approach of like the morning, right. And like getting dressed. I remember that, right. Like no more, no more sweatpants after what we all went through. And, you know, Jacqueline, would you talk a little bit about, because you know, style can be scary. It can be scary because we are getting peppered all day long. You're supposed to wear this. You're supposed to look like this. You're supposed to do your hair like this. This is the next makeup. This You have to have this shoe or forget about it. Like all of this. How do you help kind of someone that is a little bit scared about style or to even like try something new? How do you help navigate kind of that scared of style? I know I've like been like, well, can't wear that outside my comfort zone. I, I think the first is um, really taking the time to get to know our clients to drown out the noise. Like let's drown out what you think fashion is, what you think style is, your perceptions of it. Let's focus on you specifically and what you feel best wearing. And not only like what your current style aspiration, like what your current style is, but what are your aspirations? What do you want? Mm-hmm. your style to look like right like do you want to continue to wear athleisure but just elevate it do you want to wear more dresses do you want to like how do you want to feel and we spend a lot of time 
getting to that point, like current state versus where do you want to go? And then I think the second thing is we, th th that's where the education really will come in because I think once clients can see, I don't want to say it's easy, but like it is that it's attainable based mm -hmm. on like, okay, I know how to dress for my shine size. I know what colors work for me. I know my budget. I know the places that I need to, that I, that work best for me. Like I know where to get my jeans and my shoes and how to piece outfits together. That feeling of empowerment takes the fear out of it, right? Because what's fear? Here's the fear of unknown. Right? We don't know what's coming or we don't know. So we're afraid. But if you know and have the knowledge, you're taking that fear away. Mm -hmm. And I think the third aspect is, you know, we will push our clients. Um, I, I'm laughing because I can just, I, I picture some of our, you know, our client interactions where we'll hold up leather or we'll hold up hot pink and we'll hold up suede. They'll be like, nope. And I'm thinking of our one client who was like, no to leather. And now she loves leather. <laughs> and I, so I think we will push you in an effort to, because we see it in you. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to put you in something that you're not comfortable in, or that's not authentic to you, mm -hmm. but we do encourage our clients to try. And that's our rule is like, when we do style sessions, when we purchase things, like you don't have to love it. You don't have to buy it, but you do have to try. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is leaning into the fear along with like, okay, drown out the noise, put the edge, get the education on what works best for you. And then just dip into, dip your foot into different things, try different things. And you, you'll be, you'll surprise yourself. Mm -hmm. Laura what would you add anything no I think that's it and it, it never ends and even if you are self-proclaimed stylish there's still fear of style like Jacqueline pushes me all the time on like vice versa you should try that and I'd be like oh I don't know about that but it, it's the rule you give it a try and then before you know it hey it works more often than not sometimes it doesn't and that's okay but it is about giving giving it a try I Right. Anytime we're trying something new, I mean, Jacqueline, I think you hit it. It's like the fear is the fear of the unknown, right? So if we can like try it, it's like, okay, let me just check the box and like try it. You just never know. But if we sit there in that fear, that the yeah. fear of the unknown is greater than yep. the fear of trying it, like yeah. that's not a good place to be in, in your career, your professional growth and, or in your style growth. And so having support, I, I mean, it's so funny because like coaching came up at the beginning, right? When we started and it's still here, right? You're coaching your clients like through this. It's not only just getting to understand, helping them to understand what their style is, but even like pushing them beyond limits that they can't see at the moment. I think that's the true, like, I, I mean, gold of hiring like great mentors or great coaches or great stylists because they have, they have to see something that you don't yet. And if you feel comfortable and safe, they can then, you can like now take that step holding their hand. It's so oh. important to have that support. And so I can just like hear it. And I hope our audience can too, is that even taking this to like your own business or your own employees, like you can just hear how they have worked, not only with their employees when they were in their yeah. corporate professional financial careers to what they do now, it, that coaching and coachability is so such like a transferable skill into everything. Yeah, I think um, that's right, Shelly. It's this component of you wear style, but you also wear confidence, right? And it comes with pushing boundaries over time. It's not linear either, by the way. So it it, it compounds. So like once you put on that new outfit that you didn't have before, you're more willing to take that next maybe adventurous step in your style or what it is that you're wearing. It's it's a really big part, I would say, of developing that confidence. It comes over time and that ability to get over the fear comes over time as well when you're more confident in your your style that you've achieved yeah I love that I love that now one of the things that I know that you do differently at shine well there's quite a few things let's be honest here but I want to talk on the wardrobe and then I kind of want to go over to the shine substance side uh, of the business a little bit is just when you're creating wardrobes I know that you do it with longevity with style changing, literally, I feel like all the time, 
how do you do that? Like, how do you create longevity in style? I mean, like, I know, like, listen, like I got my favorite pair of jeans and like, they're with me in the long haul, but like everything else, it, I feel like it's changing so much. Mm -hmm. There, there are pieces that I would say are timeless, regardless of the time that you're in. And the approach that we tend to take with those pieces is that's where you're going to max, like, that's where you're going to spend your money. Those are truly investment pieces. They're staple for your closet. Um, and we'll build that as the foundation of any single wardrobe. Yeah. We then weave in more what we call statement pieces or stylistic pieces that are maybe trends of a season or multiple seasons, frankly, right? On top of that. So we always start first with like, hey, here's just foundational wardrobe that is pretty timeless. You will always need these things like think good investment jeans, black dress the blazer blazer shoes. right there's just things there that regardless will always be there and then mm -hmm. all the other stuff that's where we we maybe won't invest all of your dollars and cents in the statement pieces that aren't going to be as timeless because that's just not practical mm -hmm. and we and realistic and realistic yeah. so i would say that's the the primary approach that we'll take in terms of getting that longevity out of out of the wardrobe for our clients it's like once you have that foundation, it's really easy to just add different things and sprinkle yeah. things in over the seasons, right? Mm -hmm. Like once you're like, oh, okay, let's see, mm -hmm. strappy tops are in for this season or lime green is in. Like I, I love these dark pair of jeans mm -hmm. that I have and I can wear them with little platform shoes. I'm going to go grab a lime green top to go with it, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can, once you have those staple pieces, it's easy to, to and, not, match. and not be overwhelmed by all the trends. Mm -hmm. And it's also and, okay to not invest in or not pay attention to every trend. There's some trends that I'm like, yeah, I'm good. We don't <laughs> leave that one at the door. Yeah. But, but we're going to like, we're a client, right? And, and that's fine because we'll spend the time there. But I think that's the other thing. It's like not every trend is worth your time mm. or money. Isn't that the truth on like everything that we see in here? Not everything is meant for you and that's okay. Yeah. Pass it on by, pass it on by. You know what I mean? Like so, I'll give an example, the, the denim, so denim on denim is really big for spring. And I don't know how I feel about it for me specifically, but I love denim. So today I bought a pair of denim heels that Laura sent me. I was like, I need these because mm -hmm. to me, I'm like, okay, I'll wear these with jeans. I'll wear little denim heels and I'll mm -hmm. wear a different top. Like I don't need to wear a whole Canadian tuxedo. But for me, that's my way of embracing the trends. It's my way of attaining yeah. it for what works to me. And there might works be smaller for me. ways, right? Yeah. Like that's a smaller way. Like yeah. the geometric glasses, those are really like yes. all the rage this season. That's right. I don't know that I'm going to be able to embrace all geometric glasses, but there's probably some shapes that we could maximize on. So I think there's... Mm -hmm. There's even ways to take little elements of things that you might want to holistically leave at the door, but there might be one little thing about it that you want to bring in. That's right. Which that's your choice, right? Like yeah. we all have that choice on what we want to yeah. like pick up and, and yeah. not. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's yep. what we help our clients with. I love that. I love that. And so this is like, you know, shine image consulting is kind of multifaceted and we've really been talking about style and clothes but it's not like we we just barely brought up to like trends right like denim and geometric glasses like we we were talking more about everything that comes with it everything that you gain from understanding your style so this podcast might be a little bit surprising because it wasn't just all about style trends that's not what we were talking about this is the transformation that you take when you have your style achieved now there's the other side of sh shine image and that is the substance style or substance area, mm -hmm. which, like I said, when we started 32 years, professional experience. So just a little bit of time. And if <laughs> yeah. you're watching this, you know, you'll see, like, you'll be like, look at them and be like, there's no way Shelly, there's 32 years. Like it's between the two of them oh, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and they both look amazing, Aww. but uh, Jacqueline, share a little bit about this side of shine. Sure. So there's, there's two areas of the shine business, the shine style, which we spent a lot of time on, on, and then the shine substance side. And that is really the career consulting side, because as much as we love 
styling people and making them feel joy when they walk in their closet. It, it's so much deeper than that. And so the career consulting side really dives into, okay, we can dress you, but how do you build your confidence and self-esteem so that comes across in whatever professional interaction that you're having? Mm -hmm. And so we specialize in really specific areas of expertise when it comes to career and expressing your best self that we have a ton of experience and decades of experience. And that is leadership, presentations, salary, and like negotiations, like when you're going into a new position, like career transitions, and then also presentations and prospecting because these are all the areas that we spent so much time in when we were at the previous organization and so much time coaching women that we feel as though those are specific areas that women can shrink themselves Mm -hmm. whether it's purposeful or not and we do believe style has a place there to lift you up and not shrink yourself but you have to look the part and be the part. You have to be the part Mm -hmm. and you have to be you. And that's where the career consulting comes in. Um, We take all the passion and experience that we have and we help with individuals Mm -hmm. with that. And the other aspect is we also do speaking engagements. So we've, Mm -hmm. companies have brought us in to speak to their like women resource groups or maybe saleswomen or women who are working primarily with clients. And so we're there to help them build their, their pitch, their introductions, how they credentialize themselves, how do they answer tough questions, how do they negotiate their salary, how do they basically Mm. advocate for themselves. So that's a whole other part of the business. And a lot of our clients do both the style and career consulting. Love that. Okay. So Laura, like I know in your position, you had so many under you that you were obviously coaching up. What are some of the biggest, like, what, what, like two to three skills that you think most women are lacking when it comes to like their career advocacy? Cause this is something I'm super passionate about and you have to be good at, you have to, you have to, especially you're if you're taught. seen, huh? You're not taught. That. Yeah. No, no. They don't want to teach you to ask for more money. Yeah. Are you kidding me? No yeah. way. So um, what would you say kind of like are the the biggest two to three that you've seen that you've had to consistently coach on? Honestly, I think I could probably distill it down to really one, although there is multitudes, but I'm going to focus on what I would say is the foundation Okay, is just be you. So many women, and I know Jack, you've experienced this as well, and I have fallen victim to, trust me particularly in a corporate or professional environment that has a culture, a dynamic, if you can run the tendency of trying to be something that you're not, trying to be an image of what the company might want you to be or what your boss might want you to be. And the reality is when you do that, it's at the expense of who you are on the inside. Mm. I guess what that shows, that actually hurts your image. So many women, like, and you can actually diagnose it in a hot second. It was diagnosed with me where they're just not comfortable in their own skin. Yeah. And it's largely driven by this pressure to want to be better, want to achieve success. And they feel like they have to be in a mold. And the practical reality is, is if you're just yourself unapologetically, you actually will perform better. Mm -hmm. And I, as I shared, like I fell victim to that early in my career. And I had a really great boss at the time who happened to be a man. And I was frustrated because I wasn't getting promoted. And, but I was a strong performer and it was, yeah, Laura, what I'm going to tell you is you you just be you. There's no one else better to be, just be you. Mm. And it was like giving me the permission, like, okay, never really thought about that. And it's just so unbelievably true. We see it all the time. Yeah. It's like figuring out who you are and and just being that and feeling comfortable with that. And the beauty of that is when you get feedback and you get coaching from other people in a professional environment, 
you're just, you're making adjustments on the fringes of your authentic self versus if you're trying to be somebody that you're not, you're getting feedback all the time. Yeah, it's going to be confusing because you're like living a persona that isn't necessarily you. Mm -hmm. And so feedback is even harder to take because you feel like you got to swing the pendulum to some other authentic, per un unauthentic person, right? So that to me is pri like primary thing number one. It's largely the biggest impediment that I've seen in my professional career. Um, and then certainly there's a lot of skills on top of that, right? But it all starts with this, like, being yourself so that you can then ask for that promotion. You can ask for that raise. You can lead people that want to follow you and, and you know, achieve your vision that you have for them. It really does start from within. Yeah. And I think that, like, when I think about our career consulting sessions with women, like when we, like when we role play on a presentation oh, they have to do, or we role play a, a negotiation of salary with a boss or advocacy, you almost see after we go through role playing, like you almost see the weight being lifted off their shoulder when we're like, we're going to make this authentic to you. Like mm -hmm. we're not asking you to be anybody else but you, but we're going to help push you to where you're advocating yourself in a way that is comfortable and natural and authentic to you mm -hmm. not a not a professional corporate soldier mm -hmm. like yeah. that there's a necessity for that in certain aspects but how do I think that's where women get lost is because they're like okay I need to fill this mold and I'm going to do this mm -hmm. it's not sustainable you start to question whether you're even being fulfilled in your life or your career because it's not who you are so our goal is mm -hmm. to you can do all of these things and still be who you are. Because absent of that, like my favorite phrase that I've ever leveraged is you are all sizzle and no steak. You're just this like portrayed image of mm -hmm. a picture of somebody that's not even you. And then there's not really substance behind it. And guess what? The people that are watching you, the decision makers about that promotion, the decision makers about that salary raise, all they see is sizzle and there's no steak. And like, that is not what we would want. Mm -hmm. for any of our clients and again we wouldn't be sharing this if we hadn't fallen victim to that ourselves That's right. and and have learned and grown from that and and, and teaching and coaching that advocacy for yourself i mean i i spent so many years in corporate so like i get it you know um as you will continue to get to know me and all my listeners like i needed more of a filter rather than less but um, less Shelly. No, it, the, the thing was, is that skill of advocacy for yourself in your career is something that you can take over into all areas of your life. Yeah, so sure. like what you're coaching right there is specific to like career development, right. And, and being able to, to become the advocate for yourself. Once you become strong there and you become confident there. Now, when it comes to your health, right within the healthcare system, you have to be an advocate. You don't like what the doctor tells you, go get a second opinion, right? Like you don't like how this bill looks, go tell them how it should look. Like becoming an advocate for yourself is something that I think as women, we kind of like go on, we have these like periods of strength and then we like maybe get hit or something personally has something happens. And then we kind of falter that confidence mm -hmm. and we got to bring it back up. That advocacy for ourselves is so powerful. And it's even like someone may come to you for career coaching, I would imagine. And then all of a sudden be like, I hate how I look in these clothes. This is not how I want to look. This is how I think the company wants me to look. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that. that all the time. All I the could time. see that. I could see that. And so I think it's so neat because shine image consulting, right. Is not just style. And that's what I love is that there's so much more depth there and knowledge and that wisdom shared to really help transform other women. And, and I just, I truly think what you guys are doing, the more I get to know, the more I get to watch on social media, it's, it's so powerful. So I love Jacqueline that you had that itch back in 2020, you had to take the detour, right? Yeah. But I love that you had that itch and it truly is the two of you. You guys are so different, but so complimentary and it's incredible to watch. We laugh all the time. We are so different. 
but it is it what's it is what makes it fun and we yeah. hopefully challenge each other that's right um yeah which is truly what it's all about especially i, I realize i've gotten older you're not being challenged you're not growing it's yeah. uncomfortable right yeah. like it's not like it's easy it's not like oh cool like let me just go challenge myself today. Like it's hard. And so having not only a business partner, but having mentors and coaches, and that's what like shine can do for so many women, which is so incredibly cool. And it's like, you think about it, it's almost like, um, like network marketing. It's, it's like you, you yeah. do it for someone and then they can help someone else. And then they can help. Like, it's, yeah. it's like, you're, you're building up this, this level of confidence and, and all of this experience so that it can be shared across. That's right. That's right. We always, we always say that to our clients, women are watching you, whether it's women at work, whether it's your friends, whether it's your daughters, whether it's any woman in your life, they're watching you in more ways than you think. So why not set the right example for them? I like it's a lot of this conversation. I don't know about all of our, the listeners today, but I'm going to tell you a lot of this conversation is how I want to portray myself to my daughter. That's the most important little Thing. little woman in my life. And so I know we all three of us have girls. Yeah. So I know that like everything that I do, she's watching whether yeah. it's good or bad or proud yeah. or like, Ugh, I want to do over in that moment. Like, um, it's, it's, that's the one that I've been thinking about in this conversation is, is how am I leading her? You know? Right. And I'm a true believer too, that the mom is the leader of the family, right? Like, I think mom is the leader of the family when it comes to health, wellness, business mindset, happiness, sadness, like mom is a leader and it's an important role that we get to take. So, um, okay. I have just absolutely loved this conversation and I want it to continue on yet. I want to respect your time. That being said, what is the best way for any of our listeners to follow you and get in touch with you? So people can follow us at Shine Image Consulting on Instagram. They can find us at Shine Image Consulting on LinkedIn. That's also our website, shineimageconsulting.com. We do complimentary consultations to talk to women and hear their story and hear where they currently are and where they want to go and see if our services can help them. So we, we would love to talk with you, but at least follow us, engage with us, ask us questions. We're here mm -hmm. to be a resource and your biggest cheerleader and then here to support you as well while you're inspiring you to invest in a good pair of jeans along the way. I'm always, I don't know about you. I'm always looking for a good pair of jeans and I feel like they get harder and harder to find sometimes. So that's a staple, right? Longevity, yeah, yeah. staple that piece. Is nice, it's a staple. That is a shine staple for your closet. Yeah. Shine staple. I love it. I love it. Well, ladies, thank you so much again for joining. Um, everyone that stayed all the way till the end, I absolutely love that you did. And if you go to their website, the shineimageconsulting.com down at the bottom, you can book that consultation call. Um, I would highly recommend it. You can see the value and the heart behind what Jacqueline and Laura are offering for everybody. And even if it's like following them on social media, so women supporting women is like a big thing. And so you can learn, like they're pouring into their community all the time on style. So even if you're at a point where you're like not ready to do anything, that's fine. Follow them and learn. It is so cool. So, um, and if you know anybody that wants to get better game when it comes to their style, share this episode, sharing makes this so powerful. This podcast, I, today we are passing 500 downloads, it's just a short amount of time. I'm so excited. Um, and it, it, I don't have the huge email community. I don't have the, like, Here's what I do have is I have such a great group of women that um, are supporting me, that have given me the reviews and shared because this is for you. This wisdom from Jacqueline and Laura today are from you. So the more that you can tag and share us, we will give you that love right back. And um, we can't wait to see you until the very next episode here on the business of being healthy. Till then, we'll see you soon. <laughs>